In 1805, Britain was on the brink of invasion. Napoleon Bonaparte's Grand Army had gathered in northern France and only needed a fleet of ships to carry it across the English Channel and Great Britain would surely fall. The British Royal Navy was tasked with locating and intercepting the combined fleet to stop any chance of it reaching the Grand Army. The Royal Navy was led by Horatio Nelson, one of the most feared and respected naval commanders of the time, Nelson had an unrivaled ability to outthink his enemy tactically, but his unorthodox methods carried great risk. The French and Spanish navies were led by Pierre Charles Villeneuve. The French admiral had a numerically stronger fleet at his disposal, however his cautious nature meant he was blighted by indecision and a poorly coordinated command structure. The Royal Navy's fleet had 27 ships and 2,148 guns at its disposal. Its key vessel was the HMS Victory, Nelson's famous first-rate flagship. It had 104 guns on three gun decks, but its huge frame made manoeuvring more difficult. The French and Spanish Navy's combined fleet had 33 ships with 2,630 guns. The largest ship in the battle, the Santima Trinidad, was a huge first-rate vessel that had four gun decks. It had more firepower than the British fleet's flagship with 140 guns, but was slower and more unresponsive in light winds as a result. The Royal Navy's key weapon was a 24-pound gun. This hulking cannon fired projectiles that could penetrate thick hulls, but with each one weighing three tons, they were difficult to handle for the gun crew. The key weapon for the French and Spanish was the chain shot, a highly destructive ammunition ideal for taking out masts and rigging of ships, but was only effective at close range. At 6.30am, the crew of the British ships prepared the gun decks for battle. Nelson sends out a signal to the entire fleet, England expects that every man will do his duty. Vice Admiral Collingwood's flagship Royal Sovereign holds fire until coming astern of the Santa Ana. A full broadside from the Royal Sovereign cuts the way down the length of the Spanish ship, killing hundreds of its crew. The guns of the Royal Sovereign have been double-shotted, each loaded with both grape shot and a ball to cause more devastating damage upon impact. At first, fainting to take on the vanguard of the fleet at the very front, Victory suddenly changes course to break the line between Redoubtable and Bucenta, the French flagship. Unable to find a way through the densely packed ships, Victory rammed straight into Redoubtable. Now in deadly close quarters of the enemy, Nelson exchanges broadsides of Redoubtable, Bucenta and the Spanish flagship Santissima Trinidad. Seeing that the front third of his fleet is sailing north, away from the battlefield, Admiral Villeneuve sends out a command to recall them. They respond but their progress against the wind is slow. The captain of victory, Thomas Hardy, manoeuvres to engage a smaller ship, Redoubtable, drawing alongside it. A fierce exchange of musket fire from the top decks of each ship begins, with experienced French musketeers finding easy targets among the British sailors, marines and officers of victory. With the muskets of the Redoubtable peppering victory's top deck, at 1.15pm a shot strikes Nelson in the shoulder. Critically wounded and in extreme pain, the Admiral is taken below deck. Returning belatedly to the battle, the French lead squadron threatens to break the attack, but a British group forms up in line to divert them. The relentless broadside smashed the French ships and they were forced to change course away from the thick of the battle. Between 4.15 and 4.30pm, Hardy goes below deck to visit Nelson and inform him of the victory. Nelson replies, Thank God I've done my duty, before finally succumbing to his wound. The French ship Achilles, heavily damaged during the fighting, blows up at about 5.30pm, dramatically signalling the end of the battle. So there you have it, one of the most critically important naval clashes of all time, the Battle of Trafalgar. I hope you enjoyed the video, and remember, if you have any ideas for future battle map videos, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.